So over the years, we've made videos helping homeowners understand the basic testing equipment they need to take on electrical projects around the house safely. Now that consisted of pretty much these three amigos here of your outlet tester with the GFCI testing, non-contact voltage tester, and a digital multimeter. That would cover 99% of anything you need to test within your home electrical system and a lot of the different appliances around the house. But things have changed quite a bit and what was once a kind of fringe piece of test equipment most DIYers didn't jump into, the clamp meter, now is kind of your one-stop shop. So I would say between the outlet tester and the clamp meter, that is all you need as a DIYer now. You do not need a non-contact voltage tester and you do not need a digital multimeter. So let me jump into some of these features. We'll demo it out here on the little test rig we have. And I think you're gonna quickly see why this is gonna cover pretty much anything you have around the house. Now we'll run through these features. We'll go through the most commonly used first. So a classic non-contact voltage tester, we would turn that on and we'd use that testing probe to go ahead and detect that we have voltage at this electrical box and outlet. That is indicated by a red light and audible alarm. So now the clamp meter, you can have it in any setting, but what we're gonna do is hold down on the NCV orange button, and now you have actually a test probe at the top of the clamp. So you'll hold down until you see EF come up on the display, and now you can use that as a non-contact voltage tester. Now as a homeowner, you're gonna use that feature all the time because we wanna make sure anytime we're working within the electrical box that all the power is cut to the circuit we're working on and also there's no other circuits running through that electrical box. So next most common feature starts to get into what we'd use a digital multimeter or DMM for. So we'll go ahead and we'll scroll the dial over to the voltage for AC and then we're gonna connect up our probes, black to the common here, and then red to our voltage. Also, you'll be used for ohms when you do resistance. And then for the probes, if you have new probes, I go ahead and I take off the category three, four clamps, so now I can use these probes to test an outlet. Now one little handy feature, you do have a holder where you could press that black probe in and we'll put it in the neutral side, then we'll use our red going into the hot side, measuring out 117 volts, so we see if we have voltage. We could do the same thing across the ground, making sure we have the similar 117, and we do. So that's testing the AC voltage at our outlet, which is a common troubleshooting step as well around your house. Next up, we'll do voltage DC. Now that is that solid line with dashes underneath. Voltage DC is usually bringing me out to more of an automotive application. And now I'm just moving around my range so I have the decimal point in the second position so I can read out 12 point whatever it is. That's what I'd be expecting on this 12 volt system for my battery when the engine is not on. So measuring across the positive and negative, I see I get 12.7 or 12.8 volts, which indicates a healthy battery. Next up, maybe I think my alternator isn't working correctly. Maybe it's not charging my battery. So I would start the engine, and then I would go through the same testing across the negative and positive of the battery, expecting to get well over that 12.7. That would indicate my alternator is actually charging my battery and that the alternator is working correctly. So we got 13.9 knowing our alternator is good. Now the other main functions that I use a multimeter for, this clamp meter also has, it's in the continuity check and resistance check, kind of the top of the dial here. But first I wanna jump in, let's do an application with actually using the current clamp, what was once the main function of a clamp meter. I use this mostly around the house in my service panel, and I was using it quite a bit when I was doing sizing for a generator inlet plug. Do I need 30 amps or do I need 50 amps when I only have the critical circuits in my home? So I was measuring across the conductors going into each of those critical circuit breakers, but also measuring across both split phases, both 120 phases coming into the house to make sure I understand how many amps I pull when the critical circuits are going. So that was my main use case, but we can do a little test with this little space heater and measure the current and show you how it actually doesn't work 
A lot of people are mistaken how this clamp meter works, but we'll do it properly so you can even measure appliances at your house to get a better understanding of on the loads of each of your circuits. So first let me show you how this doesn't work. We're not able to turn on a load like this heater, turn the clamp meter to two to 20 amps, and then clamp around your power cord. That is not going to give you a reading because we have both the hot and neutral conductors going through that cord and we need these split out to get a proper reading. One way to measure at the appliance is if you actually have access to the hot side conductor. You could go ahead and measure across that and you can see we're reading out 9.65 amps. That is what this heater is pulling. If we cranked it up to high, Now you can see we're reading out 11.1 amps, give or take. Now another way to measure this at the actual individual appliance is this splitter that comes with the kit. You'll see a link in the description. It'll go over to our Amazon store and then under the electrical section, you'll see the actual clamp meter, the, the Klein Tool CL120, an outlet tester with that GFCI test button, and then also this split adapter that allows you to measure at the appliance you usually can get that for 70 or 80 dollars and it's a pretty good deal so how the split tester works is you just plug your appliance into that it breaks out the hot side and your neutral side you'll plug that in and then you're able to turn your appliance back on and now with the adapter it actually multiplies the current by 10 so you need to set it in the 200 to 400 range, clamp around the adapter, and then we know it's times 10, so we see it's reading out 97.8 amps. So with a divided by 10, that would be 9.7 amps. So very similar to what we saw initially going from the hot conductor. So pretty cool, right? I mean, am I the only one who's surprised on all the different features they're building in the clamp meters? And to be honest, it's kind of making the multimeter a little bit obsolete. Now you can go higher end than this. Here's an example of an ideal clamp meter. It's a little more money. It actually has two displays. You can get the display on the bottom as well that will read out. This also will do temperature, it will do capacitance, it will do frequency, which are all measurements that the CL120 from Klein Tools will not do. Now I like the Klein Tools because it's a little smaller overall in its packaging. And to be honest, other than capacitance, I wouldn't really use those other features around the house. But we just touched on resistance and continuity checks. If you wanna dive deeper in continuity checks and when those can come in handy, especially tracing wires, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through a scenario on a condo I was redoing when I was trying to understand which outlets were connected to each other. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.